play action fake. Keel throws for the end zone. Touchdown! Bearcats! Three plays into the season. Gunner Keel delivers to Mikhail McKay. It's Stu Anima here, my co host, as always. He is the man, he's the brand, Jay Thomas. What's going on, Stu? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. We're here with a special guest, the one and only, the chosen one, Mr. Indiana. Gunner Kill. Gunner Kill. How you doing, man? Good Pop man. it up, man. Good Gunner good. Kill is in the building. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hey, man, we appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. How was your, how was your Thanksgiving? It's good. It was good. Spent in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so it wasn't too bad. Cool. Cool. Always got to remember to be grateful, show yeah. that gratitude, no you know, with your loved ones and um, with everything that goes on with our lives, we sometimes forget the little things. So Thanksgiving was great. Uh, it was in Springfield, Ohio. Shout out to John Legend. So still, good, good. you're going to have to cook the next time. <laughs> TV dinners. <laughs> <laughs> you probably cook Ooh. worse than El Hodge. Ooh, hey. That's a shot at El Hodge, cameraman. <laughs> so Gunner coming from Columbus, Indiana. Uh, little old town. Um, first of all, going to Columbus East, you know, what was that like, you know, just being being in that small town environment and get a chance to put on for your hometown and, you know, just coming from those small beginners? Yeah, it was great, honestly. You know, um, it was a football town, honestly. Um, had a lot of fun, had a lot of success. But uh, the guys around me were, were first class. You know, coaching staff was awesome. Players were awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was, a, it was a great – uh, city to be raised in for sure. I've never been to Columbus, Indiana. It's boring, but it's nice. <laughs> People are nice. <laughs> so I know that um, you know you come from a football family. You know your dad played at uh, Butler, right? Yep. Your brother played at Illinois State. Yep. And an- another one played at help me out. Indiana. Indiana. So just coming from that whole background of just football. You really didn't have an option. <laughs> like, Not at all. It was Not like, at all. Oh, are you the youngest? Youngest. You're the youngest. youngest. So that's why Two we call him the chosen one. Right. So, yeah. You know, the last one, the grand finale. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. what was that like? You know, did you feel that pressure growing up? And who really, like, introduced you to the game of football at a young age? Uh, You know, I didn't think there was too much pressure. I know um, uh, my two older brothers had great success. You know, they got the opportunity to play at the next level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean – to have those guys around to to help me was was awesome, and I had my dad who played football and uncles that played football. So yeah, Uncle Blair, Uncle Blair played in Notre Dame seven yep. seasons in the NFL. Yep. So I mean, just to have those people in my life, man, it's just it's a blessing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Just being in that environment, you know, that's, that probably helped you, you know, mentally. Oh, no know. doubt, no doubt about it. You know, I think what I've been through and what I'm going to go through is just. You know, it just it tells a lot about my family and, mm. and how they've raised me. Mm. Yeah. So who was that first person that put the football in your hand? Was it dad? Was it Uncle Blair? You know, actually, I give I give all the credit to my mom. Your mom, um, mm. my mom for wow. sure. You know, even whenever I was I was born, I was I was in the crib and she put the football in in my hand. You know, so there's actually a funny picture of me as a little baby and and I got a big head and <laughs> big body and you know, a <laughs> blonde head and I got my football in my hand. So, wow. It's a funny picture. So yeah. I'm, I'm jealous, man, because, you know, don't laugh, you guys. Y'all probably heard this story uh, before. You know, I'm a basketball player. I played a little bit of football, or at least I tried. Yeah, you tried. And uh, my seventh grade year at Princeton Middle School, you know, I'm the start receiver. I just hit a growth <laughs> spurt. <laughs> I go out for an out route. I dive, and, like, I'm like, oh, my hand. I, I broke my wrist. Oh. The next year, I'm like, all right, I'm going to come back. I broke the other wrist. Oh. So I had, to I had to announce my retirement. <laughs> After two years of football. So, I was supposed to be playing with you. Hey, man. So oh. It is what it is, man. It's just, uh, it ain't work out. Yeah. And, and Stu couldn't gain weight, so. Yeah, so that ruined it. It, it ruined it. <laughs> That's fake. It ruined it. But, you know, growing up, we all have our favorite players and people mm-hmm. we looked up to. And um, I know you got a chance to spend some time at the Peyton Manning Passing Academy. How was that, you know, like learning from him? And, like, who were some people growing up that, like, that you really looked up to, you know, as a quarterback or just as an athlete? Yeah, so, you know, I was very fortunate enough to get the opportunity to go to the Manning camp for three years. And my first year, you know, uh, I got the call from Archie. And it, it came up as a Mississippi area code. And I remember being like, ah, I don't need this. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, I'm not just going to let this one go to the voicemail. All so right. it goes to voicemail, and my mom and dad are leaving, and I get it. 
and here's in this in the southern twins oh, this is archie manning i was like no way right so immediately <laughs> is I that call, his father yeah, yeah, yeah this is that. so i immediately call my mom and dad like no way you're never gonna believe this and i actually still have the voicemail so wow. you know it was it was a blessing like mm-hmm. i said to, to be there and to learn from these guys and to get to know them on a, on a personal level you know it's just you see them on the field and and for me that was a guy I always looked up to. So Peyton Manning's the man, and especially playing for the Colts and me being from Indiana, you know, that was mm-hmm. awesome. And and to get to know them on a different standpoint is, is amazing just because mm-hmm. you get to know them as a person, not as a football player, which mm-hmm. is huge because everyone gets perceived differently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's he's first class, and he's a genuine guy, and, and his commercials where he's funny, and he's that's just him. That's his personality. So that mm-hmm. was awesome getting to see that. That's mm-hmm. what's up, man. Uh, I've never got a chance to meet him, but I will meet him one day. Yeah, I did meet Larry Bird, you know, years, years Jealous ago about that. before I, social see, media. I gotta, see, I went to a Pacers game, mm-hmm. and, you know, Larry Bird is like, what is he, like the he's, something there? I don't know. He's a And so we would wait outside the thing where the players come out. So he comes Bro, out. The tunnel. Yep, yeah, that's yep, where I met him at. Yep, he came out in his car. I was like, <gasps> I ran to his car, and he's like, nope. And I, I was <laughs> at the window, and he's like, nope. I was like. How old were you? I was, I was in high school. I was probably like a freshman. Oh, wow. I was hurt. That's evil. I was hurt. That's yeah. evil. That's I didn't get a picture or nothing. Okay. Well, all right, Larry. We're going to remember that. <laughs> 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 but being from Indiana, man, uh, did you grow up a Colts fan? And, um, you know, if you had a dream to play with any team professionally, would it be the Colts or hopefully not the Bungles? But <laughs> the Bengals. The Bungles. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I didn't really have a favorite NFL team, honestly. Really? You know, I just, I liked to, like, anybody my, my two older brothers liked, I mm-hmm. was rooting for those guys. It was kind of like whatever my two older brothers do, I was mm-hmm. going to do exactly what they were going to do. So, Got you. And, and standpoint of playing for anybody, shoot, I'll play for anybody. I just want to get an opportunity. To play right. the next level. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all I need. Yep. It's, yeah. it's anybody. You just need an opportunity. You that's know? all. It, you, that's, you know, yeah, with mm-hmm. anything, business. You no know, doubt about it. Because you can have the talent. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have all the potential, but it just takes one person to believe in you. I remember when I played basketball and I was mm-hmm. going to different showcases, I remember my dad would just be like, well, son, at the end of the day, regardless if you get a chance to play college basketball or not, it just takes one coach. Yeah, yeah, you know, to just, see the see just, something just in. Just yeah. one person. Yeah, just one yeah. person to, to believe in you. That's it. That's right. all you need is one person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like we harped on last week, you know, this is called the Millennial Believer for a reason because we want you guys to believe in you. Believe in yourself. Exactly. So yeah. we're here to motivate, inspire, educate, and occasionally make you laugh. Yeah. And that, that's coming from Stu. <laughs> but, um, you know, you just growing up, like we, like we said, um, you know, I know you were – Pretty much Mr. Indiana. You were named the Gatorade Indiana Player of the Year, Mr. Football to Indiana. So what made you, um, you know, choose ultimately to go to Indiana at first and uh, take that route? And then what made you ultimately choose to even come to Cincinnati? Yeah, so, you know, my story is is all over the place. I mean, a lot of people, it always gets brought up, you know, but Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful at the same time. You know, Mm -hmm. people... Come at me and like, you know, what were you thinking? You know, what was mm-hmm. going on? You know, at the same time, I was 18 years old. You know, mm-hmm. making a very hard decision, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't change any of it. You know, my biggest thing is that God has a plan, and and you gotta trust it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, um, committed to Indiana out of high school. My 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 middle brother went there, and and I'm a local kid. I love my family. We're very close. So I live 45 minutes away from Bloomington, Indiana. So I mm-hmm. thought, you know what, I'm going to go to IU. And, you know, things just didn't work out. So uh, I fell in love with LSU's quarterback coach. Later find out that he, he's sick. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he ends up not even coaching the, the following year. Mm-hmm. So that was a big dagger in the heart. And I thought to myself, I can't go 17 hours away from my family. That's, that's just, I can't right. do it. Yeah. So decommitted from LSU. Mm-hmm. And it was a, like the next day, you know, because I enrolled early. I enrolled early to uh, – my to Notre Dame you know I graduated high school early you know I wanted to get a jump start being early enrollee and the day I committed or decommitted from LSU is you know I have to I have to make a decision because the next day is signing you know I got to sign to right. go get ready for for class so right. you know I'm I'm panicking and and I'm telling my mom and dad like hey like I just want to take a semester off like let me just go to like a little small down the road college or whatever and just 
let me be normal and let me figure out what I want to do. You know? I never knew that. And, and, and that. at the end of the day, I slept on it and I prayed about it and uh, got a lot of insight from my mom and dad. And, you know, Notre Dame, I thought it would be a good fit. And I go there for a year and a half. And their uh, redshirt freshman, Everett Golson, who's a phenomenal player, you know, takes him to the national championship. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, this guy is a year older than me. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to have phenomenal success. He just went took his team to a national championship. You know, I don't want to ride the bench for four years and get one year playing. You know, I want to play. Right. And, and so I decided to, to transfer, to transfer. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and, mm-hmm. but, you know, so be it. Everyone mm-hmm. has their own opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, but I made, I think I made the right decision to come to Cincinnati and I've had some ups and downs, but overall I've enjoyed the process and mm-hmm. wouldn't change any of it. Exactly. I think it's it's interesting how you say you took that you took that break. You know what I mean. And so what did what did you gain from that? Like that just stepping away for a second. Oh, I I didn't end up taking the break. Oh, you didn't take no, it. No, I didn't oh, take the okay. break. You okay, know, I, I got you. I wanted to, but mm-hmm. my mom and dad were like, "Hey, you, you know, mm-hmm. you have a lot of other schools that really want you. You know, right. and Notre Dame is a great academic school. You're gonna, gotcha. and and." You come out of Notre Dame with with your degree, you know, sky's mm-hmm. the limit, you mm-hmm. know. But mm-hmm. I'm 18 years old, like I said, you know. I'm not yeah. thinking about academics. I'm thinking about football, right? Mm-hmm. Which is which is dumb of me, but you know, that's, that's my at that age. that's my immaturity to show. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, that was a great learning experience for me, mm-hmm. and definitely learned and grew as a person from that that mm-hmm. opportunity. Right. I can only imagine, mm-hmm. like. You know, as a kid, like I had Division two, like junior college, Division three looks, mm-hmm. but I didn't have the like right opportunity to come out of high school, so I didn't never receive the Division one offer. But I can never imagine like having like Alabama calling, you know what I mean, and like USC, UCLA, like those are like dream schools. Oh yeah. So uh, for those people that don't know, um, I mean, Gunner had received some scholarship offers from like Alabama, Georgia, mm-hmm. LSU, Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, Missouri, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, to name a few. So, you know, you just talked about it a little bit, but for the recruits out there, like how important is it not to rush into a decision and, and to make sure you know, you're you're weighing all your options and just how how is that process? You know, going through that. If uh, I could do it all over age. again, if I could do it all over again, the main thing I would focus on is. I would surround myself with being around the guys more, the guys on the team. Instead of my biggest thing was I want to get to know the coaching staff. Mm-hmm. I want to get to know this staff. I want to get to know them all. But at the end of the day, you're going to be with your guys. You know, those are your mm-hmm. teammates. Those are your brothers, you know. And that's what I wish I could do all over again was I didn't spend enough time and didn't ask them enough questions about the program like I should have. Mm-hmm. Because at the time, you know, you're 18 and you, mm-hmm. you go to these programs and, you know, you're kind of – you're, you're you're shocked that you're getting this opportunity, but you're you're also very um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, intimidated mm-hmm. by these big name guys that you're mm-hmm. like, well, oh, I don't really want to ask them any questions because this is, you know, this is a who's a big quarterback. Whenever um, what school was it? I'm trying to think, like uh, like anywhere, like Alabama was starting quarterback at the mm-hmm. time. I you forget know? the name. Yeah, so mm-hmm. and, and, and like you just think like. You know, this guy has had such success at the school. He's won a national championship. You know, like, what, what do I ask him? Right. You know, I'm just. But then again, you just got to realize that they're just another person. You yeah, know, exactly. they're just they're they might be a football player, but there's more to that person than what you really think. And yeah. you just got to get to know them. Right. So those are going to be you guys. Right. Um, mm. So just getting to know your team and uh, getting to have that chemistry is important. And, how important is that chemistry? Talk about that a little bit. Because I know I coach, I coach seventh grade basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I try to tell them all the time, like, man, it's, you, skill is good. All of that is good. But at the end of the day, a, a great team, a team that's like a family, in the hard times they're going to be able to endure. Oh, no doubt. You know, no, so. no, it's huge, honestly. You know, you mm-hmm. got to have that camaraderie with, with the guys. Yeah. You know, if if one person thinks that they're better than the other person and their ego is, is much bigger and they think that they're sweet, then that team's going to fail. Mm. You know, and and um, you know our our year didn't turn out like it like we wanted to, but you know things happen for a reason. But I still think those guys on the team that we were we were still very close. Just mm-hmm. things didn't go our way, you mm-hmm. know, and that and that happens. And and like I said before, you know, God's got a plan, and you got to mm-hmm. trust it. You know, right. He wouldn't be putting you in the situation if you couldn't handle it. Right. And, and at the time, you know, maybe Cincinnati football can handle that right now, but. You know, everyone has a down year, and 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 we just got to build off of that. But uh, you know, you got to be, you got to stay as a family and as a tight group 
tight group when those hard times come coming your way because mm-hmm. you don't want you know a loss to ruin everything right mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause there's, and at the end of the day, it's just it's just a game. Like yeah. it's just, it's just a game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's supposed to be fun. Like we should be enjoying it. You know. I think guys mm-hmm. take it so serious now. It's like, oh my gosh, you know what's going to happen if we lose? Right. Well, we lose. Yeah. You know, like, bounce back. We're right. still going to wake up. Right. And the sun's going to rise. Mm-hmm. You know, we're still going to live our lives. Like mm-hmm. well, the the thing is, is like, what are you going to do whenever it's over? Mm. You know, what, a lot, what, a lot what? of a lot of athletes, you know, when it's over with. They're not sure what to do. You know, nah. A lot of athletes go into the post depression. It's like, yeah. you know, what do I do when all I've done is perform my whole life and now I'm supposed to, you know, work a nine to five or do right. this? They're not used to that. Nah. Do you used to working with a team? So And like Pete it's, Carroll, it's different. I like I love Pete Carroll, the um, Seahawks coach. Mm-hmm. Um and he told his players, I can't remember what the player's name is, but he got hit really hard. He almost broke his neck. Can't remember what his name was. I think he did break his neck, actually. Kind yeah, of. yeah, I think, yeah. yeah so, I, I read the story not too long ago. Yeah, I, I read it on, on the Players Facebook. Tribune. Yeah, yeah, did you, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing, amazing. He told them, um, he tells all his players, you live in a fairy tale world. All right, because stuff is going to go, the fans are going to go away. All right, the 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 house, all of these things, it's going to go away at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have, if you don't know who you are and you get lost into what you do, Mm-hmm. Then you'll you'll you know you'll feel lost. You got to play yeah. the money, you know, so, the fame, yeah, the fast cars, the fans, women, you know, all of that. Yeah, eventually that it's going to end. Yeah, you the, know, that's all temporary, and a lot of people mm-hmm. only want you for your success. No, nah. and you nah. really find out. You know exactly how this is. I know what it was like when things ain't going your way, and like when you're not the man. You find out who's really rocking oh, with you. No I, doubt about yeah. it. You, no you, doubt about you know it. What mm-hmm. I mean, so just like. Um, and when I when I played and when I stopped playing, it's just I noticed, you know, oh, oh yeah. I don't get the same attention. But that's just how mm-hmm. it is. So. Oh, yeah. And, you know, those people, you know, even though that does happen, you know, you, yeah. and that person does that, treat you differently, mm-hmm. you don't go treating them differently, you know. Mm-hmm. You still, yeah. you kill them with kindness. Yeah. And you, you, you be the bigger person. And, exactly. And, you know, because that's, that's what God put us on earth to do, right? You know. Yeah. Just, and even though, like, you know, like, like we talked about, despite the long recruiting process from, Indiana, LSU, Notre Dame, and then choosing to come to Cincinnati, you, you know, you got a lot of crit- criticism, and when you decide to do something different, you become misunderstood. So, like we talked about with yep. the lifestyle brand, misunderstood millennial, you know, I know that that had to motivate you and help, help you just play with a chip in your shoulder, and when I look back over your career, all I can say is well done, because um, you did it, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm looking at just some of these career highlights, you know, in high school, in two seasons, you threw for, you know, 4,000 Eight hundred thirty one passing yards, sixty one touchdowns in two years as a high school starter. Like that's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Just to think about just the, the short, you know, tenor you had in high school, but some of the like the the career highlights I remember is the the first game. First mm-hmm. game, I was at the game. El Hodge, I don't know if he was there. Um gets Toledo at Paul Brown Stadium, six touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So Gunner over here, he broke the FBS record for a debut in the first ever game. Mm-hmm. And um, that was definitely a highlight I'll never, like, ever, ever forget. Yeah. So what was that like, like, your first game? Just, like, you've been out for a while and getting a chance to come out in front of the fans and you break a record. It was so surreal. You know, it's, it's just one of those moments that you, you dream about. You know, mm-hmm. you, just, you yeah. play in your head, like, you know, what's it going to be like whenever I first play a game? Like, right. am I going to play well? Am I going to play bad? Mm-hmm. And I was a nervous wreck. You know, I was... I couldn't sleep all week. You know, I was watching so much film, and I didn't want to fail. That was my biggest thing is I don't want to fail. Yeah. And I remember talking to so many of the starters, like, what's it like? What's it like playing in a game? Mm -hmm. You know? And and one guy that that was always there for me, and he he could have just said, you know what, young guy? You know, whatever. You know, I'm going to do my own thing, and that's Machi Lego. Mm-hmm. And I love I love Munchie to death. Yep. And and you know he had that bad injury against Illinois, and, and you know he came was to battles. Your, was that your sophomore year? Uh, that was my first year here. So mm-hmm. you were a sophomore. I was a yeah redshirt. I forget. Were I think I started as a redshirt year? sophomore. You, no, yeah. I was no. Okay. So he gets hurt, and the next year he was battling back, and I ended up playing, mm-hmm. and and I had a really good game, and that guy stood in my corner, and he was the first one when I came off the bench. You know, whenever I came off the field, he was the first one to get off the bench and, and tell me good job or I need to do this or he sees this. And so, you know, whenever I had that, that career day, he was right there to congratulate me. You know, he mm. could have been sour about it, but right. he was such a great guy. And, and that went so far 
to me whenever whenever I was a young guy. Mm-hmm. That was my first first time playing. You know, right. I'm just kind of slinging it, just having fun. Mm-hmm. And I just so happened to throw six touchdowns and, and had a really good day. And, you know, he, he was there in my corner. He helped me mm-hmm. succeed in that game. And I take I give so much credit to Munchie for, for how I played that game. I'll never forget it. It's always good having somebody in your corner, man. Oh, yeah. You know, always, always, always. Mm-hmm. It goes a long way. Back to what we talked about, you just, you know, well done with your career. Uh, some of the career highlights, mm-hmm. our list of some of them, because I'm just a big fan. Tony mm-hmm. Pike, Marty Gilliard. A status, uh, t- no, can't even say the word. Isaiah P, thoughts and prayers with him. He had that career and an injury, um, mm-hmm. lost part of his leg, so that was devastating. But yeah. those were all people I looked up to. So then when you come in, I'm like, dang, like this is like the next Tony Pike. <laughs> you know, literally, he, you was like the next Tony Pike to me. So 6,835 passing yards, 56 touchdowns, only 26 interceptions in your whole career here. That's amazing. And your first mm-hmm. season, you tied up with Ben Mark with um, the passing uh, – what is it? The thirty-one yard, thirty-one touchdowns. You tied the record with them. So that's just like seeing that. Everything you got a chance to do is a blessing. Like, what is it like to leave a legacy for the young kids? They're like, hey, I came in and I set my mark, and you can too. So yeah, just leave a know, legacy. What's that like for you? At the, at the end of the day, you know those those numbers are awesome, and 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 they're going to stay there. You know, I'm a part of UC history, and and I'm very blessed to 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 be there. You know, but. I really wouldn't be there with those guys around me, you know, mm-hmm. Chris Moore, Johnny Holton, Mikel McKay, Shaq, Max Morrison, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Alex Chisholm, you know, those guys, Nate Cole. NFL receivers. Unbelievable guys, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then the offensive line, I mean, some some big dudes. I remember first year I played with, we had eight or nine guys rotating offensive line. Like, that's mm-hmm. amazing. And yeah. their average was Average height weighs like six six, like mm. three hundred. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. what quarterback wouldn't? I yeah. mean, the system I was in too. We we're we we're throwing it all over the yard, you know. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, this it doesn't really mean much. As as if you're not a good guy, and and you don't take, you know, the the ups and downs like you're supposed to, and if if you don't lead like you're supposed to, then it doesn't mean anything. And if you mm-hmm. don't get the respect from the guys, then it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I I take great pride. And what I did off the field, you know, being yeah. being a team player, you know, battling yeah. through adversity, you know, mm-hmm. speaking up whenever no one would, and and just being there for my guys. I think that's that's what I like the most about my career is that I never gave up on the on the people around me, and even whenever I wasn't playing, mm-hmm. you know, I was still there for those guys. Yeah, and I never gave up hope. I never gave up doubt, and I just tried to do whatever I could for my teammates. I'd rather people. Remember me as as Gunnar Keel, the the person off the field, and just being a good guy, mm-hmm. than Gunnar Keel on the field. Because you know people aren't going to remember Gunnar Keel at all the next two years. You know, you know who like you think back through the years and you think who who was on the who who all were all Americans last year? Who was on the first team All American? I don't know. You don't mm-hmm. you don't think of it like yeah. uh, you know well, you, you don't you don't, go, you don't you think a, of that. You got a good point. Mm-hmm. But you just remember those people and what they did off the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why I, I won't I wrote this down. I said the true test of a man's character is in times of adversity. You know, you may not be responsible for getting knocked down, but you are responsible for getting back up. Yeah. And I've literally witnessed you do that. Right. You know, off the field, on yeah. the field, like literally on the field. Joey Bosa knocked you in your butt. <laughs> this dude got right back up. <laughs> I've seen it. The, the Memphis game. Yeah. It's um, unbelievable. I mean, you've played against a lot of NFL <laughs> talent, man, and you've balked up, so I don't blame you. <laughs> but, you know, when times get rough, you know, just staying persistent, you know, and showing people that through difficult times you have to, you know, keep going. And, um, you know, for the younger people out there, how how important is it for you that to harp on, like, uh, leaning on your faith and, you know, really mm. what you believe in and just staying close to your support system. That foundation. No doubt, mm-hmm. yeah. I know mm-hmm. you're a man of faith. Oh, so yeah. Oh, how, yeah. how important and, was that for you to just stay close to, like, you know, your your cores and oh, yeah. everything that you believe in? Well, my my spirituality has just grown tremendously tremendously this year. You know, this, this, this year alone, you know. I'm not going to lie. The first year I played, you know, I, I had a really good year. You know, I came back, and, and I already knew. I was like, I'm going to be the starter next year. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm the guy now. Mm-hmm. You know, I had I had a big head, you know, and, and I got put right back into my place. And, you know, I deserved it. I deserved to be put, be put back in my place. And I'm so happy I did. Mm-hmm. You know, I got I got that shot against Memphis. And, and Hayden comes in and has 
a phenomenal game, throws for 530 yards and three quarters, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why not have a quarterback competition? And I took that to heart, and, you know, I battled back. And then things didn't go well this year, but, you know, that's whenever you turn to your faith the most. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever tough times come your way, what are you going to do? Are you going to be slumped? Are you going to feel sorry for yourself? Are you going to, you know, crawl in a hole and and and, and, and play the smallest violin and, and, yeah. and just <laughs> yeah. suck up your own tears? You know, yeah. what, what are you going to do? And mm -hmm. I think that, that shows a lot as a person whenever you bounce back, like you said, through those hard times, through adversity mm -hmm. and... and Gosh, there were so many times where I questioned, you know, dude, is this worth it? Do I really want to do this? I felt you know? the same. I know, I know exactly how it is as an athlete. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. with me, you know, after losing my best friend at 18 of cancer, and I'm like, okay, my mom works at UC. Do I go to UC and just, like, gain that college experience, or do I go away from home, play at a Division two? And I'm like, well, it's a, it's a good chance I'm not going to the NBA, so is it worth it? So I had to really question that, but – you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, because if I wasn't – if I did continue to play ball, like, you know, I wouldn't even be here on this podcast yeah, right now. Exactly. Like, right. You know, the so nonprofit, for yeah, stuff, you, you, stuff that I never thought I would ever did would have never happened if I would have just thought about me yeah. to go away. So everybody has a different you, journey. You truly learn a lot about yourself, you know, especially you build so much character. Mm -hmm. and, and especially just, in college at oh, this yeah. time. Like, I learned a lot about myself the past yeah. four years. You just build so much off of, off of, your, off of your mistakes and of your failures, you know, and mm -hmm. you just, whenever you go through that hard time and you finish, you feel so much better about the outcome than, mm -hmm. you know, I'm done. And so, you take the easy ride or you take the hard ride. You right. talked about how, like, you could almost quit, you know, in, in just some life football, or whatever. And Stu always asks us, this, he asks this question, uh, what's your why, you know? Right. Because if you don't remember your why, you, you would have quit. But obviously, you or if your it. why's not big enough, you know, you know, a lot of times people quit because their why is they don't know it or it's yeah, just not big know. enough we'll or it's just up. about them, you know? Yeah. We'll get so. you up in the morning. What's your why to keep going? What's your, what's your why? You know, um, that's a great question. You know, I, I get up every morning and and think to myself, you know, God's given me so many opportunities. You know, the people that I'm closest with, my mom and dad, my two brothers, my, my cousins, my aunts and uncles, you know, those people have believed in me. You know, why stop now? And, mm -hmm. and I want to do it for me. You know, this is about me now. I've done it so many for so many different people. You know, my first year coming out and playing, you know, I was getting bashed by fans. I was like, I'm playing this year because of you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, last year I was playing because I had the big head. You know, I'm I'm the guy. I'm super sweet. You know, mm -hmm. and that's not how it is. And then this year, you know, I came out and my mind was completely different. You know, I'm going to do it for the team. I'm doing this for myself. And, and at the end of the day, it's going to feel so much better, win or lose. First string, second string, third string. You're gonna feel so much better about yourself if you just go and do it, and you and you try your best. And you know, and if, if bad things happen, then they have happened for a reason. You know, mm -hmm. my big thing is is I've, I said it before is is God wouldn't put you in these situations if you couldn't handle it. You know, mm -hmm. God gives his toughest toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and pride comes before destruction. Yeah, and you obviously been humble. You know, you stay you stay humble. So, as it's a good testimony again that I've watched you just mature, even just for the year or two I've known you. You know that you never you never were like a prideful person. Like no. every time I saw you, you were always like humble or like, oh hey, what's up, Jay? Like you just you always tell me like you know, even though I may play a sport, you know, it's more than that. Right. And we really got a chance to build a relationship. So, yeah. so thank yeah. you for that. You yeah. know, teaching me to yeah. be humble. So how does one? stay like that you know there's a lot of people who start to see success and they start getting a big head and they start even looking down on other people yeah so how does some how does how how did you stay true to who you were how did you stay humble you know i relied on the people that were closest around me you know mm -hmm. and i turned to my face so much and and i found a, an awesome church in cincinnati i go to and i go there every sunday and and you know i think that's what keeps you humbled is is, mm -hmm. is your is your faith you know your faith with god and mm -hmm. it's funny because i speak so much about god and and how lucky we are to be here in all my interviews and mm -hmm. one of the one of our staff members for cincinnati was like well when did you become so spiritual it's like i've always been spiritual you know mm -hmm. but sometimes you get lost and you know god's always right there to pick you back up mm -hmm. and he's gonna do whatever he can do to 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 make you happy you know mm -hmm. to 
he works in so many mysterious ways, but, you know, he's always going to be there for you. Right. You know, like we talked about uh, a little bit, we talked about Cincinnati, but you could have went anywhere, but our river is brown. So, like, <laughs> why Cincinnati, man? Let's, they they didn't got, take him past that part. Yeah. I mean, he came, when he came to visit, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, they didn't take me down the river. That would have been, been, been it. Yeah. That been it. Like, they, were, they, were, they were thinking. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, whenever. whenever Was it the chili or. No, nah, I honestly don't like Skyline. Everyone's going to hate me for that, I but I don't, I don't like it. I don't either. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I loved the quarterback coach, Coach Henshaw, Darren Henshaw. You know, he uh, he recruited me out of, of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And whenever, you know, his his that staff, Coach Dooley's staff at the time, they, they got fired. And uh, I heard that he was at Cincinnati. And, you know, I, I, I had a great relationship with him. Mm-hmm. And I loved the offense. So I was like, you know what, this is, this is perfect, you mm-hmm. know. And they have two senior quarterbacks. I can go. I'm already going to sit out a year. Why right. not learn from something right. from them? I know yeah. a lot about Monchi Lego, and I know mm-hmm. a lot about Brendan Kay, and they have had a lot of success. And I watched a lot of their games, mm-hmm. and and I just love Cincinnati as, as a whole. You know, it's just and coming down here too, and actually getting to know people, and that was big for me. Like I already, already I was in the locker room at Notre Dame, mm-hmm. and I already knew that that was a big thing. Is you got to get closer to you guys, All right? So I came down here and I, I I hung out with all of them and I said I love these guys you know mm-hmm. they're actually they treat them with so much respect right. and and they're so nice and mm-hmm. you know why not come here this right. is the great fit great offense and and I feel like I'm gonna be able to, to succeed here mm. so you, it shows the growth that you had from yeah. where you started yeah. and then how you chose it and how you looked at things at the perspective it showed your growth oh no mm-hmm. doubt. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you definitely matured, like you know, yeah. like that that one year, just yeah. from high school to to not things weren't working out, and then mm-hmm. you see that and you just build off of it. Because how old are you now? Twenty three. Twenty three. I'm. I'll be twenty two next month. You just think about like from eighteen to twenty three, how much you've grown. Oh, it's amazing. It's to the a young year kids, too. I know. To the young kids out there, uh, I harp on this. Like for those who don't know, like I know, I know more about sports and song. But, you know, you were a five-star rated quarterback. You were rated as number one uh, at Rivals as a pro-style quarterback and ESPN Top 150 recruit. Played in the two, 2012 U.S. Ar- Army game and uh, elite 11 QB selection. So for the people that's younger, they have the talent, but they may not have the exposure. Like, how do they get a chance to get their names out there more? Like, what camps can they go to? Mm. Or, like, how can yeah. how can that next person out of Columbus, Indiana – I know it's all about rankings and ratings, but, you know, how can they get their name out there? Yeah. So what advice would you give to, like, so, the young kids to I get was, that exposure? I was, I was so fortunate to have two older brothers that, that, that went through the process, and I was so lucky to have a dad like I have who who learned from it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, with my oldest brother, you know, it took him a while. He He sent out his highlight tape as a junior in high school, mm-hmm. and people don't realize that, you can send out a highlight tape when you're in middle school. See, I regret that. I didn't. I didn't put yeah. myself yeah. out there. See, but yeah. people, people don't know do that. It. People have no idea. They're waiting that, for somebody to come yeah, to them. You, yeah. and, and our high school coach, you know, he's super old school, and he was mm-hmm. a great coach, you know. But you know, his big thing was if if, if you're good enough, they'll find you, and, mm-hmm. and that's maybe true. Yeah. But at the same time, you got to go out there and you got to market yourself. Yeah. That's what my dad would tell and, me. Like, and you got to start building your own brand. And so I honestly, I went to my first camp as a seventh grader in high school with my middle brother, mm-hmm. and we, and we we hit up some like the uh, little one double A schools and and the max schools and mm-hmm. you just, you build off slow and then you kind of just you you go high, you right. know, and and um, it's funny. Uh, so we me and my middle brother Dusty we went to a camp mm-hmm. and. We're all sitting there, and there's about 30 other people in the room. Mm-hmm. And it's a junior day, and the coach was, you know, he's talking. He's like, I want you guys to say your name, what position you play, and then what year you are in school. Mm-hmm. And he points to me, the very first one. Oh, oh man. Oh, no. <laughs> right. And I stand up as a seventh grader. I've got my tiny little voice. I'm mm-hmm. not that – I was actually a big seventh grader, but I was like, I'm Gunnar Keel, and mm-hmm. – I go to Central Middle School and I'm in the seventh grade, and everybody just turns around and I'm like, "What in the world is this seventh grader doing here?" Right. And I had I had a, a, 
cannon for an arm as seventh grader. I could sling it. Is that why your name is Gunner? Like, you know, maybe, but <laughs> but like it really is Gunner. Yeah, right? it is. It That's is. the crazy thing. Yeah. So it was destined to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're we go out and we're throwing, and we're throwing deep balls, and you know, uh, we're throwing we're just throwing fifty yard. I have, like posts or something like that. We're just he wants to see how the coach wants to see how our arm, our arm strength is. Right. And I'm a seventh grader, you know, and I'm like, I don't think I've ever thrown the ball 50 yards. Right. And I take my he, and he comes up to me before and he's like, Hey, do you want to scoot up? Like, is it? I was like, oh, Nope. I got it. <laughs> yeah. I got this. And I take a drop and I take the biggest hitch and I sling this thing back and I throw everything I have into this ball. Mm-hmm. And I thank God I rip I rip this thing mm-hmm. and it goes 50 yards and I'm like, Thank you God. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. thinking I'm like. I just throw the ball 50 right, yards right. there, you know? Dang. Oh, I man. tried to throw, but my, like, sock. My, yeah, my shoulder be hurting. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll be thinking. I'll be doing the It must be the mean. form, yeah. <laughs> I, I must not have the right form. My shoulder be all thrown out. <laughs> so I got cool. lucky. I was very lucky. You know, very like fortunate. we talked about off the field, uh, yeah. I know you received your bachelor's, right? Yep. You got your degree. Got um, my degree. And? Health education. Health education. Mm. And uh, are you pursuing your master's? or? So, um... I have, like I said, two older brothers, and one's actually a physical therapist now. Mm-hmm. And my middle brother is just, I think he's has like a semester, and he's going to be done with his, he's going to be a physical therapist. Right. And, you know, I went down and visited them at their school in mm-hmm. Nashville and met all the professors. Cause I didn't, school, I, they, uh, I think it was Nashville State okay. or Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was like, oh, TSU. Uh, yeah, T, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to do PT, but once mm-hmm. I went down there and got to know the the, the professors and stuff, and what's mm-hmm. it all about, you know, right. I think so. I'm going to take another year prereqs, um, and then apply to physical therapy school. Mm. Clap it up! Amazing, yeah, appreciate it. Man. Amazing, Thanks. amazing. So, um, health education, right? Yep. So, what would you what would you see yourself doing after football with your degree? Would it be like? Um, in the training room, like kind of walk me through. Well, that's what then I'm going to do the PT route and then become a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. And then my brothers and I want to open up uh, our own clinical and own we already business. have our own little thing right now. Mm-hmm. It's K three, K three training. You know, that's why we're up. K three. Yeah. Three brothers. K three. So, yeah, that's so we, we, my oldest brother's already like, he's so mm-hmm. bought into it. So mm-hmm. that's why I wear so much K three gear and, mm-hmm. And, and you did used to wear the wristbands. So yeah, like yeah. The B we K3, have B, B uncommon. And then G uh, G three. G three. The stay positive. Speaking G three. G three. Because we were just talking about God and being spiritual. Go ahead and tell them what G three means. You know, G three is is give God glory. Mm. Yeah, that's huge for me. And I actually took off all my wristbands because I was getting rashes. You know, my mm-hmm. wish I had them on. The game. We'll have to show his game day. His swag, man. He be wearing yeah. the body. Yeah, I got, I got I got like I think it was I had. I had seven, seven wristbands, seven like the wristbands, and then was it, sleeves. I think it was five and a watch. I wore a blue watch. Oh man, a blue what? I have a watch. If you go back and watch the game, a watch. I, I have a watch on. What? But that, that watch <laughs> means a lot to me. It symbolizes a lot. You know, I'll, later down in life, I'll explain to people what the watch means. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll have to have a talk off the scene. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had to help me out. So. You know who you remind me of? Go ahead, Stu. Tim Tebow. Mm. I would not class myself in that rate just because he's 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 so he's up here. I'm like down here. It's the it's the he's it's the, the character and the just like the demeanor, you know, and you know, just being a person of faith, you know, just representing. That's just the first person that comes to yeah, my mind. Being and, yeah. And yeah, being unashamed and misunderstood, misunderstood millennial, you know. Believer. And you know, sometimes when you're a person of faith, you 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 go through things, and that strengthens your faith. Yeah, you know, okay. a lot of us want to um, get strength. We ask God for strength, but we don't want to go through anything that makes us stronger. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so, it's. I think it's just amazing. Everybody has their own journey. You yeah. know, and life is a journey. I always say life is a journey, not a race. Yeah. A lot of people are racing, running, 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 trying to beat somebody else. Yeah, but it's not a competition. Not at all. Not you at know. All. You know, and also along with that, you know, you don't you don't know what certain people are going through in their mm-hmm. life. You know, we're so quick to judge other people. You know, you just you have no idea what some people are going through and mm-hmm. how good some people have it and how nasty 
those people are to certain people. You know, mm. it just it kills me now in society how people are looked at and how it's so mm. frowned upon. Like, yeah. like I just don't understand why everyone can't just get along. You know, yeah. <clears throat> like, how hard is it to be a nice person? Yeah, mm. I think for some reason I just feel like it all comes down to fear. Mm. I think I a lot of people are so yeah. yeah. Fear holds a lot of people back. I remember yeah. this quote. Um, I saw it on social media and uh, somebody said, I'm happy that I went through the struggle because I stumbled across my strength. Mm, mm. And it's true. Oh, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't really regret, you know, any of the, of the decisions. Uh, shout out to Lecrae. He has a song, No Regrets. I listen to mm-hmm. it every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can't live with no regrets. You really mm-hmm. can't. And mm-hmm. You wouldn't be the person you are today, you know, without it. Yeah. And so I got a question. Um, fear. Because fear is so... It just, it kills so many dreams. It holds so many people back from a lot of things, you mm-hmm. know. So you talked about how, you know, your first game, you know, you were just like a little nervous and all of that. And so how a lot of people are held back by fear. So how do you, how do you conquer fear? You know, my biggest, my biggest fear is, is failure. Mm-hmm. I, think, I, I think that goes for a lot of people. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to fail. Yeah. But at the same time, you fear failure, but how are you going to grow as a person if you don't fail at something. Right. So, you know, we all fear it, but fear and failure are so good because you, you learn about yourself and you mm-hmm. grow as a person and then you learn from your mistakes to get better. You know, right. like say, you know, let's go back and look at the South Florida game. You know, mm-hmm. I come in, I had an awful game and I get mm-hmm. benched this year, last year, right. South Florida at South Florida, mm-hmm. you know, I get benched. After the first quarter, I already have two picks. Mm-hmm. You know, how am I going to react? Mm-hmm. Am I going to am I going to cry about it? Mm-hmm. And the way I handled it was terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, the next day I had a, I had a, we had a, we had a, a players only meeting, and I take I said some stuff that I wish I would have never said at all. Was mm-hmm. it to the players, coaches? It was to the players, you mm-hmm. know, but it wasn't it wasn't how I was supposed to, to go about it. I mm-hmm. went a, a, mm-hmm. I went about it the complete wrong way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I failed. Mm-hmm. I failed as a teammate. I failed as a, as a player, mm-hmm. you know, and I failed as, as so many other things. But then you go back and you think, dang, man, why did I do that? Like, mm-hmm. why did I do that? Like, I'm so dumb. Right. But then you learn from it. Right. And then you think, I'm never going to make that same mistake again. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, but if you don't, if you don't go out and, and try to, to do something, you know, then then how are you going to grow as a person? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I think a lot of people, you know, they don't do nothing. Yeah. You know, they they're just they want to play it safe. Right. And so, but then later on, they look back like, dang it, I yeah, I should have. Yeah. You know, I should so, have. You said how you know that wasn't really your proudest fond moment. Well, what was your favorite memory here at Cincinnati? My favorite moment, believe it or not. Is uh, whether there was a particular game, a special you moment. Yeah, it's, it's not even it's not even about the games. It's not even about the stats or or me throwing an X amount of touchdown passes or any of that. I think it was me this year taking on the role of being a third string quarterback. Hmm. You know, that's just because it shows. You know, I've I've been the highest of the high and I've been at the lowest of the low. And this year was definitely my low point. Mm-hmm. But I learned so much about myself being a third string quarterback. Thinking, you know, I'm still a leader for this program. Mm. You know, during the summer, I was you're, still getting third string. You're a captain, still, yeah, right? still a captain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was still getting third string reps. Mm-hmm. But you know, who was lead? I was leading those practices. I was in charge of everything. Right. You know, and whenever guys went to someone, they came to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I gained a lot of respect from the guys on the team just because of the role I played. Right. And and like I said, you know, whenever whenever I was starting and Munchie was there in my corner, you know, I thought, you know what, I, um, Munchie was such a great person, I'm going to do the exact same thing for Hayden Moore. I'm going to do the exact same thing for Ross Trail. Mm-hmm. You know, anytime they play and they come off the sideline, I'm going to be the first one there. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to slap on the head. I'm going to tell them they did a phenomenal job. I'm going to go down the line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slap all the wide receivers, mm-hmm. give them high fives, go to the O-line, tell them they're doing a great job. And then any opportunity I could get with the defense, I was going to tell them they're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, and you see during the game, we'll be losing. So many guys have their heads down, but you know what? It's like, fellas, yeah, we might be losing Mm -hmm. and we might lose this game, but you got to go out there and have fun. 
But, like, it's just a game. You right. know, just go in there and enjoy it. Yeah. You know, what's holding you back? Who cares? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. So I think I, I, that's my most memorable and will go down as my favorite this year. And you know what? That's that I like that because a lot of people are willing to lead when you know they're they're in front of the camera and they're the guy. But I, I think a true leader is somebody who can lead behind the scenes. Yep. You know, somebody who doesn't need the spotlight. Somebody who can you know when people are down, go to them when the camera's not on them and give them an encouraging word. You know, every, I think a great leader is a great follower first off. Yeah. But then also somebody who can you know not you have that spot. Yeah. And can. it also exactly. goes back to like we were talking about how you know something goes wrong mm-hmm. you know you fail at something and and that person has gone through a tragic time and they're mm-hmm. stuck like they're low so low right you know what can they do to, to build back up and that's where i was at and i built my back my built myself back up and guy saw that and they're like you know what mm-hmm. he's he's shown his true characters he failed he's made a lot of mistakes but he's learning from mistakes and he's he's showing what he can do better at mm-hmm Amazing. Exactly. I got a few more questions. Mm-hmm. You, know, you whatever you got. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you a little bit of a chef. Right? Oh, yep. Sh- I'll be in there. He <laughs> did. You did cook for us at one time, and I know you. You do have a tradition. You used to cook for the linemen. I did. So, what are what are some hidden talents that people need mm. to know? Can you sing or? Just, so I just know about Chef Gunner. That's all I know. I'd be the most amazing. Housewife, house dad, whatever you want to call it, in the entire world. If any if any lady is looking for a sugar daddy and take care of the kid and clean the house and, and cook, you're looking at them. Yep. You know, I take, I take great pride, and I always watch my mom. You know, she'd always fold clothes, and she'd always do our laundry. Oh, and you fold do clothes. fold. She always fold clothes. <laughs> So I would always watch her. I just kind of critique and look back, and I was like, okay. You know, this yeah. started at a young age. So I'm like, okay, I can mm-hmm. fold. She's getting it. Right. I was like, how can I make this better? What can I do? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I have my own little personal folding style now, and mm-hmm. I take great pride in it. And I fold my shirts up and color coordinate, and and I fold my sweatshirts a certain way, mm-hmm. fold my sweatpants a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is pretty – I'm very – Neat. Very neat and organized mm-hmm. in the household. I'm about to move to a new house. So I'm going to remember that because I remember visiting your apartment. And I'm like, how do you fit all – he yeah. literally folds. You probably fit a lot in, like, places oh, where yeah, it seems like – Oh, yeah. you got to see it. Because my clothes, if you go in my room, I have a – it's kind of shameful. You've been in there. Mostly, I have a dresser, uh, but it doesn't really have that many clothes in it. It has, like, folded papers and stuff like that. But then I have a hamper. And then that's where all my clothes are. Let's, 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 let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> hey, you know. Hey. I'll, come, I'll come help Unashamed. you. I'll come help you. Unashamed. Here, I'm, 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 I'm hired. You're going to come. come <laughs> my last two questions. Uh, I'm excited for you, man. You know, you got your degree. Mm-hmm. You got a chance to have a great career. But we know this is not the end of Gun or Kill. So what plans are next to, you know, um, get ready for potentially a, a professional career? Yeah. So... Do you plan on going to any passing camps or any, um, you know, training facilities to work out at? Uh, are you going back to Indiana? You know, I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to figure that all out. But mm-hmm. I actually got an invitation to play in the East West Shrine Game. So, it's pretty, yeah. What's it called? East West Shrine Game. Oh, like this, like a, a this, Senior Bowl. Is it the Senior Bowl? No, it's not like the big Reese's one, mm-hmm. like uh, Chris Moore played in. Mm-hmm. But uh, Parker a, Anger played in. It's, it's like the one below game. it. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty big deal. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got invited to the well, congratulations. game. Congratulations! Thank you, mm-hmm. thank you. So I think that's that. That's huge for me. So yeah. will you be in the senior boat too, or just that game? Just that game. Just that game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I'll have to watch yeah. it. I'm gonna yeah. watch it. Yeah. I have to watch it. So yeah. um, I don't know when the combine, and the draft is. I'm not worried about it. I just know in due season. Uh, just me and Stu says all the time. Be still. <laughs> yeah, be still. Yeah. yeah, just be still and know, know he's got. Yeah, because everything's gonna work out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yep. um, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, what do you want people to be? What do you want people to look at you as? Like, what do you want to be remembered by? So basically, filling in this blank, Gunner Kill was just another guy, mm. and will always be just another guy. Mm. Amazing. That's amazing. That's a great answer. Clap it up. Clap it up. Clap it up. That's amazing. Yeah. I do have one more question, though, because I've, I've been reading the Players' Tribune mm-hmm. thing, and their things are amazing. Oh, absolutely. It's oh, amazing. Them. So, you know, I didn't even know about them until recently. Yeah, I, like, I didn't wow. see it, yeah. Wow. So, basically, my question to you is, um, what would you tell that 18-year-old self 
that was, you know, young and what would you, if you could say one thing to him, maybe one encouraging word or whatever, what would you say? Mm. Trust the plan. Mm. Trust the plan. Trust the journey. The process. Trust the process. Mm. Trust everything that God is putting you through. I'm personally clapping up because that, that's that's just one of the hardest things, man, is to trust the process, especially when you're in it. Yeah. When you look back, it's like, oh, okay, you know. But when you're actually in the process, it's hard to be like, I'm in a process. Yeah. You, just, you just think you're in a situation. You know, you think you're in a problem. You think you're, oh, uh, I'm down and not realizing that God is molding you, shaping you into exactly who you're called to be. So, man, I, I've known that from experience, but I know from experience as well that when you're in that situation, it feels like you're lost. Yeah. You know, but like you say, God is always there. Yeah, no doubt about God it. God is always there. Mm-hmm. Man. You got anything, Jay? You, you got anything else? No, man. That... Well, I'm going to end it with this. Mm-hmm. Learn to give without the expectations of getting. Mm-hmm. And when you focus on just being a good steward to other people, like how you were there for Hayden and Ross, other people, I believe great things can happen. So when you focus on making things happen for other people, then you'll be blessed tenfold. So no doubt about it. That's what I'm going to end it with is, you know, just don't focus on yourself and just learn to give without expectations of getting. And this is Jay Thomas. Stu Anima with the great Gunner Kill. Mm, thank you, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you.